Okay, welcome to what will be the last construction video for building the DJHAA kit and what I need to talk to you about with this part 15 I believe it is is um, the cab so if you remember in the last video we uh, did a few bits and pieces on the cab uh, we fitted the toolbox, we fitted the rear step, we fitted the two side pieces which provide the steps for the driver and fireman to actually get into the locomotive, but we didn't do anything else. But uh, what I've done over the last couple of days, rather than do my normal thing, which is tell you what I'm going to do, go away and do it, and then come back and show you what I've done and any pitfalls, I've actually been away and I've, I've done everything that I needed to do. So the first thing that I've done is I have built the cab interior. Sorry about the sun. The sun is in a particularly bad angle at this time of the day. But um, this large piece at the bottom that you can see, that's one white metal casting. And that is the floor of the... Uh, floor of the cab. Uh, the back head at the back that's another white metal casting and if you can see it screws in with self-tapping screws you don't need to solder but what you need to do is you need to make sure that this casting sits level on this casting um, there may be a little bit of flash that you will need to remove uh, but before you start building the cab controls I suggest that you make sure that these two castings the big casting for the uh, cab floor interior and the back head casting that they fit as well as they're going to get uh, the holes are two millimeter if you drill them two millimeter that's just right for the self-tapping screws um, and well anyway I went ahead and I built the I did all the uh, bits and pieces on the back head um, I made this, this part it, the brass part with the lid on it that that not unsurprisingly is actually called the chip fryer um, on northeastern engines because uh, it looks like one of the old-fashioned chip fries <laughs> so I made that first that's two parts um, you have to curve the uh, the lid whatever you do make sure it's square so square at the top square at the bottom make sure it's square there are half etched recesses on the inside for the curved bit to fit into um, you can cover up uh, the gap with solder it, it's not in it, it's not particularly visible but it it does take a little bit of care for something that is uh, that looks so simple um, I started I did the back head uh, in a particular order because um, you will find that uh, if you don't do it in that in this particular order you will not be able to get the pipe work in so what you do what I did after having a bit of a think about it is I started with the blower control which is this part here which you may be able to see that was the first part that I put in um, then I did the manifold on the top, which is this large casting on the top of the back head. And then I joined the two um, using the wire because once you put the regulator in... <coughs> excuse me. Once you put the regulator in and everything, you can't get at the other bits. So the, probably the easiest way to do it is to do everything except the regulator handle which is the diagonal uh, handle here leave that till last um, 
and that's what I did. I left that till last, except for the um, except for the uh, the handles on the um, uh, on the controls on the injectors and everything. There there are spares on the fret if um, if they ping off in in various directions. Um, there are a number of spares. They and they are different. Um, the injectors have got a shorter handle. Um, the uh, brake, um, the brake blower, that has um, a longer handle. The brake control. Uh, unusually for a passenger locomotive, the A8s had uh, lever reverse. There is a witness mark on the casting. All you'll need to do is just drill that out. Um, it's a rectangular witness mark. Just drill it out twice and then use a sharp blade to uh, cut the white metal away so that the extension of the lever at the bottom of the casting actually fits through the hole. Uh, the brake standard at the back, that's pretty uh, straightforward. Again, it's a 2.4mm hole for the uh, on the end of the brake standard, put that through, soldered it from below. The brake handle is a brass casting, a one millimeter hole in the top. Again, there's a witness mark, then uh, indirect solder um, 145 and 70, uh, and that's nicely in place. The other thing to mention, which I should have mentioned a bit earlier, is that you get two options for the the firebox door. Um, just make sure that you pick the right one. I think you get the option even if you if you do the 63B, 63C boiler. Um, I think that there is similar uh, choice of smoke box door. Uh, the one for the later locomotives has got quite a substantial bar at the bottom of it and it opened that way, not that way, it opened that way, so it flapped down. So that's the cab. Now the cab fits um, in the hole, it fits from below, so, and you put the the two M2 nuts on the on the frame when you started doing the um, started building the chassis up so we won't worry about that for the moment what you also have you have two gauge clusters there's one on either side I did mention these briefly the last time they are 12 millimeters from the front spectacle plate and one and a half millimeters down from the roof line um, again, I tinned the inside with 145, then tinned it with a bit of 70 on top of that, and then used indirect heat to fit them in place, having already drilled them out, fitted them with 0.5mm wire to represent the pipe work. The only downside for this is that the instructions, the, the particular part in the cab is in a shadow in the photo, so I can't tell whether the pipe work goes around the cab on a level or it disappears down. What I've made it do is I've made it disappear down. So in that case you need to uh, file a little bit of a notch in the tank castings which are quite substantial castings there's one on either side um, for the wires to go down of the pipe work going back to the cast these tank castings um, I've white metal soldered them at the bottom to the steps um, and at the top just inside the door I've again 145 and 70 degree solder and just soldered it in the angle of um, in the angle here to the cab side. Um, make sure they're as flush uh, against the sides of the locomotive that you can make them. Um, if they are not flush, then you will have problems getting the, uh, the back end, which you can see is cut off at the sides. It will not fit. 
underneath and even though I did press it in as best I could I did have to take uh, one of my wife's um, nail files to the uh, backhead casting to actually make sure that it fit uh, and there's one more part which needs to be mentioned and that is there that's the brake valve uh, that's a white metal casting and that needs to be soldered or attached somehow to the tank there is a pipe as part of this which you may or may not be able to see in there it's one millimeter oh that's on the other side what a wally there you go there's a one millimeter pipe uh, there are witness marks in the casting for the brake valve uh, it's one millimeter for the drain or the, um, the steam pipe that goes down below uh, that you can use that to support the casting if necessary and you will need to bend a small piece of 1.6 millimeter pipe to continue the ejector feed the brake ejector feed from the smoke box so that is all there is really to the cab oh and the other thing that i've done uh, which is on page 15 of the instructions it's the only thing on page 15 is i've soldered a, a piece of 0.7 millimeter wire across the uh, cab opening at the top of the step to make it look like there's a lip um, that's recommended in the instructions and to be perfectly honest it was one of the hardest tasks to actually do on this locomotive it was it was hard I lost three three bits of wire they went off anyway it's very hard to get them at the top and solder them you may wish to consider gluing them in retrospect I, I should have glued them but, but I didn't but I soldered them the other thing I've done, I've fitted the smoke box door as well. I've, there are two um, smoke box doors. Um, there's a Northeastern Railway one, which is a different shape to this one. It fits in the same hole. This one, if you're building an LNER locomotive, you just file the rivets off. The photograph of my chosen locomotive at Darlington 69875 you can just about see the rivets on the straps and as a piece of 0.7 millimeter wire as the hinge don't worry too much that the hinges don't reach the end of the smoke box it is not all that visible um, you can you could if you wanted to put uh, small fillets of material under that um, to pack it up a bit but uh, it's not immediately noticeable if you unless you have a really really close look at it and yeah people are not going to be looking at it that closely so like I said this goes up in underneath And it fits in place with two M2 screws. I've kept them all separate. You should have six of these M2 screws. The other four actually hold the chassis to the locomotive. So just let me do that. okay so there you are there is the cab in place inside screwed up um, which is great because you can take it off to um, you can take it off to paint it you can paint it separately and you can take the packhead off and paint that separately as well Sorry, I'm just going to open the curtains a bit. The sun's gone in. <laughs> okay, so there we are. Right, so we've done the cab roof. Put the bits on like I said before. And that cab roof fits on quite nicely. And we have got the bunker again, which I've not fixed in. 
So there is your ostensibly complete A8, or, although it isn't actually complete yet, because what you've got to do, and I will cover this in the last video, which covers painting and the final item. There are two parts, and this is quite clever, because one of the hardest things to do on a locomotive normally is to do the glazing of the spectacle plates front and rear. Now, this locomotive has a false spectacle plate in the cab. So what you have is you have a false spectacle plate at the front and I have cut a notch in it for the brake ejector pipe to go in and what you do is you use this as a template to cut your glazing. The glazing goes around the top of the back head and then you put this on top and it sits on top of the so if you can see it sits on top of the cylinders on the uh, tank extensions on either side and it actually hides the glazing so it looks like you've it, it looks like a, a proper bit of a cab likewise for the rear there's a false part for the rear except on this there are six on each spectacle plate opening and what I have done is I've drilled them out and I've put 0.5 millimeter brass rivets in place and then filed off the the backside cut and filed uh, and that does the same function uh, for the rear spectacle plate and the very very last thing that you need to do which you can't do until the chassis is attached to the body if you can remember back to when we made the chassis we fitted the large injector which was quite a substantial white metal casting if I get the chassis off the shelf so here's the chassis and you're probably not going to be able to see it very well but over on this side of the locomotive is the large injector and there's a substantial pipe which you ran from the back of the locomotive to the smoke box which fits into that now there is a drain pipe that needs to be fitted to that and the drain pipe like the one from the small injector on this side of the locomotive sits on underneath the footstep now I'm not going to do that until um, I've substantially painted the uh, the locomotive um, and I'm not going to go into how it's painted uh, to any great depth because all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use um, I'm going to use Halford's red primer, which is what I always use, uh, not the grey primer, because if you miss a bit, um, it looks like rust. So uh, it's more prototypical than using grey and missing a bit. But I use red. It's whatever your choice is. That's my choice. Uh, and then once it's painted black again using Halford's um, uh, matte black which doesn't come out matte but it comes out a satin colour um, I will uh, pass it to a friend of mine to have the lining put on because uh, the lining will be done with Fox transfers um, and he makes a far better job of it than I ever could um, so he will do that and I have bought and I've had in stock for quite a long time from Narrow Planet. I've got a cab, um, num I've got a, a smoke box door number plate 69875, a 51A um, shed plate for Darlington, 
and I've got two Darlington works plates which say 1528 1933 which is what the original number of 69875 was and the year that it was converted from an NER D class 444 tank locomotive so that's about it uh, for construction um, I will I will paint this get this painted up um, and I will come back to you and show you the result uh, when I can get a chance to get it lined with the current situation that may not be all that soon but as far as the kits concerned as I said it's substantially complete oh yes one thing that I really do need to mention to you if you have made or if you've got to this stage of making it you will discover that this is extremely heavy all the white metal parts on it it is very heavy it, I would say it's getting on for probably about a kilo in weight I haven't actually measured it I could go and get the bathroom scales and measure it but it is very heavy the pipes at the bottom the tank balance pipes that we put on right at the start they are extremely vulnerable to pressure now that it's got its full weight so please 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 be careful how you store this do not let it sit here put something under the front and something under the back but keep the weight off these pipes otherwise you will end up with them broken whatever uh, and it will cause you more heartache to actually fix the problems best to avoid the problems in the first place so as I said that is it this is my 69875 um, a northeastern D444 conversion with a diagram 63A boiler which it carried till 1955 my layout is modelled in 1954 so the, the boiler is correct for this locomotive the vast majority of them had diagram 63B boilers which is substantially they're the same boiler but the boiler cladding is of a, um, a closer dimension so they look different but this is correct for my locomotive in the period that I'm making I hope you've enjoyed these series of videos and I will have a think about what I'm going to do next. I've got a number of uh, locomotive kits here that I can do. I've got a MOK 4MT for a 4F, the LMS one, the IVERT one. There are a substantial number of videos of people making these, so I won't do that one. I've got a Gladiator Q6, which I could do. I've got another DJH, a standard 2, 260, which I could do. I've got a Gladiator J21, uh, J25 that I could do. Or I have got a, another DJH, a uh, standard 5 that I could do. But I will do another video. Uh, as you seem to have enjoyed this. So thank you for watching and watch out for the last video of the finished item which will be appearing in the next couple of months. Thank you very much.